Hello guys, it's that time of year again. It's time for Christmas pickups video. This is the fifth year I've done this. Uh, I was actually yesterday looking through all my Christmas pickup videos over the years and it is amazing to see what I've picked up. Uh, like my first Christmas video, pickup video ever, that's when I got like the PlayStation clock, uh, got the two box for the NES. Uh, some, you look back at wow, I must. I don't think I got that much the first Christmas and then you go back like, and go wow, it's amazing. What I've gotten over the years, of course, 2011, where I got all those Dreamcast games and the Dreamcast. Uh, I'll put a link to all those below. If you haven't seen them, or maybe you want to see them again. And I record these always with the thing of me going back and watching what I got for Christmas and the fond memories and things uh, that I've gotten. And this year, when it came to giving gifts to others, it was about memories and what they're tied to. Uh, that's what I focused on. I focused more on other people, not myself this year. But we're going to start off with what I got my son this year, or we got my son this year. Now the funny about having kids is they always surprise you. They'll, they'll throw a wrinkle into your plans for Christmas. So a couple days before Christmas, my wife took my son out to like Toys R Us to walk around and, and just look around. And I've been to us, he did this thing where he wanted something that he never mentioned before, never talked about wasn't on a list because three weeks ago my son got started getting into Pokemon trading card game it's the thing in this school now he just he's turned eight uh, Pokemon his age is now Pokemon trading cards right now and so now it's become you know a little focus on Pokemon and he wanted this thing right here the Pokemon trainer Pikachu this thing has eight little phrases if I shake him you might speak See, there you go. And uh, so I ran out <laughs> later that day and picked up the little Pikachu for him. And actually, he's supposed to sit on It's got Velcro on the bottom. And now he's going to talk. And you just sit him on his shoulder. And that's what you're supposed to do. So there you go. A little kid thing. Okay, you be quiet now, Pikachu. On that line of Pokemon, <clears throat> uh, we also got him a deck box for the cards and, of course, a. The trading card uh, uh, theme, the Bolt Twister theme for the, uh, what is it, Phantom Force, the newest XY card set. Well, what's funny about this is, he wanted, to, he wanted to wrap something up for me, and, he, and my wife let him wrap these up, thinking they're for me, when they're really for him. So, it's kind of funny when he opened up his reaction, he was like, these aren't for me? Uh, quickly, he just got a Minecraft shirt. He loves Minecraft, like every kid his age does. So there you go. I think he's got one of these the last couple of years, actually. So now I'm gonna show you a gift from him and me because they uh, both make sense. So for Christmas, my wife got me and my son, me Donkey Kong, and my son Diddy Kong, making the sense that of course I'm the father and he's the son. Even though Diddy Kong is technically I don't, is not his his son, it's just you know kind of a correlation thing. Kind of cool to have them. Definitely awesome. So, <clears throat> we got my son Lego City Undercover for the Wii U. Because last year, I got him Lego Undercover for the 3DS. And over the last year, both him and my wife beat the game. And he's won this game for a while. So, we picked it up. He's actually playing it upstairs right now. So, he's actually been playing it since early this morning. So, uh... You know, making Christmas memories by playing Lego City Undercover. Cool looking game again. I'm not good at the Lego games. Though my wife and my son are and they love them. So it's fun to watch, but I just, I get stuck and I can't play them. I try. So, because we got my son something else you'll see in a minute. Uh, a funny story, we got my son a 3DS this year. And we got this game many months ago on sale. Just to get a game, uh, Mushi Monsters Mushling Theme Park. Basically, you're just you're rebuilding a monster theme park. There's many games, and you can ride the rides, kind of thing. Uh, just a new game for 3DS for him to play with. You know, he didn't ask for it; just a new game to have uh, for him to play. So here's the funny story about the 3DS. So my son, the whole time open presents today, was like, "I hope I get a camera or a 3DS." You know. Uh, he, and the reason the 3DS became a big deal, one, he's at the age where he wants his own things. There's no more I like to share, even though he can use my 3DS at any time or my wife's. He wants his own thing now. He's that age. 
We all get that way as a kid, right? You watch your own thing, you don't like to share anymore. Uh, and this summer, when we were in Kansas City on vacation, my wife found really cheap a pink 3DS for herself. And since we both had one, my son really has died to have one for himself. And so we, we picked him up one, didn't tell him that, you know, it was for Christmas. But the last present he opened was a case for the 3DS. Uh, I want to show you the actual, uh, not only is the case pretty cool, but inside there's a cool, uh, of course, Mario uh, Star and, of course, Ray Turtle Shell a Stylus. And he opened this up and he went, oh, he was all, like, depressed. And, like, maybe you should open up and look inside. And he opened up and looked inside, and he like screamed with excitement when he found his Aqua Blue 3DS. Which, right now, Rockley has another one of his Christmas gifts in it. This is the last thing I ever uh, showed him. A Nintendo Dogs Labs and Friend. He, he likes those, those games. Uh, well, in this case, for this game, it's kind of funny. I uh, I put it down to this other lab game, you know, right on top of the Lego on the cover. So you need to put your games away, and then he noticed it, and he's like, all excited, but it's funny one of those things you do at Christmas, right? Your parents, yeah, you, you make them think they're not getting something, hide it, and then you, you know, they ultimately get it. So the very last thing you open, it was really cool, a fun thing to do uh, there. And so the last thing I forgot about, we did what everybody else has done, the amiibo thing, and he really wanted a Pikachu, so I got on Pikachu when he's already opened and he's already been playing with it. So there you go, Pikachu looks really good actually, I like it. So. Now it's time to get to my wife's stuff. And this year, I focused on a lot of memories with us. Before I get to the memories, let's just get to her Amiibo, because we all got Amiibos this year. Uh, the one I really want to get for myself, but she wanted, it was on her wish list too. Link, of course, from Legend of Zelda. The f detail on the face in this is amazing. I really love uh, this Amiibo. Anyway, so a, tie, a lot of her games are tied to memories. Uh, the first game that's tied to memory but is not uh, is Wild Arms because uh, we, again the first gift she ever gave was the first Wild Arms um, many many years ago when we first were dating and so I got Wild Arms XF she loves Wild Arms on the PSP she's actually playing it right now uh, really cool looking game done by Xseed of course who've done a lot of great games so there you go <coughs> now I got our game on the N64 this year we originally had the red N64, the watermelon color N64, many, many years ago. Uh, when the N64 was out, of course. And we only had a couple games for the N64. Pokemon Snap, which I, I've gotten since then. Again, uh, you know, a baseball game or two, because I was into baseball games at the time. That was back when the home run der big home run derby situation, the record was being broken at that time. Uh, by Sammy Sosa and Mark McGuire, I was really into that. And so we only had selective games for it. And I found this. It's not the game, but it is sequel to the game, and that is Pokemon Stadium 2. We originally had Pokemon Stadium 1. Uh, we both had fun playing it. And so when I ran across this thing, and obviously this is not the cheapest game in the world, uh, but I had to get it. It's really cool. I was really excited to get this. Now, the next game I got for, again, is a resonation of the past. This is more of a memories for us together. On the PlayStation 1, we played a lot of Time Crisis. We both loved the game. And last year, my wife got a PlayStation Move. And I saw this, and I had to get this up for us to play. And that is Time Crisis Raging Storm. Now, this is called Raging Storm because it has both Time Crisis 4 and Dead Storm Pirates. Now, Dead Storm Pirates, ironically enough, and my Chuck E. Cheese, they have that arcade game in there. So we played it a lot. So we could we played it for so that game my son knows and of course my wife would love to play Time Crisis. So uh, really cool to have Time Crisis, a version of Time Crisis uh, again. Now the last well the second the last the last thing I got is kind of funny because uh, we kind of got each other the same thing. But the last thing I'm going to show you is a game on the PlayStation One. I got this six months ago. I had to get it when I saw it. Again, I've talked about this is the first gift my wife ever got me. Ironically enough, this is the first gift she got me. Wild Arms on the PlayStation 1. The first ever 3D RPG ever made. Which is complete. has the instruction book and has the uh, a game in there. Uh, what's a, well, what the fun memories about this game and the funny thing about this game is I originally 
she got this game for me. And I started playing it. And one day she said, can I, you know, I'm gonna sit, can I sit down and watch you play? And, and this is when we were still dating. We weren't even like married yet or anything. This was very early on. And she sat down next to me and watched me play. And she, she asked one day, can I play? And I said, sure, go ahead. I, I was excited she wanted to play. Like, wow, she wants to play. That's awesome. So I set everything up for her. She started playing, and I kept playing. The, like I was ahead of her, but she eventually caught up to me because uh, she'd come over, and I was doing some other things, like whatever. And and she would kept she would play, I do those other things. And eventually, she surpassed me, and I quit playing. And I watched her play this game. And what's funny story about this game is, so she got to a certain point where there's like, uh, was it a phoenix uh, drawing on the ground? And the strategy guide we had at the time, which we no longer have, which I tried to find, but a little bit out of the price range I had for Christmas this year, after everything else I bought, maybe next year. Uh, so the guide said that you had to walk around this Phoenix a certain way to get something or do. I don't remember exactly what the detail was. And she tried, and every and she couldn't do it, so she gave up. And every six months for about three years, she tried. And then after three years, she said, I don't know why it took three years for us both to think about this or whatever. She said, I'm going to go ahead. And she was near the end of the game. She beat it. So I always teased her about this was the annual game that she would always play and never beat. This would be the game we'd have forever. Uh, never beaten. And so there's a lot of fond memories tied to this game. And so now we have it. I'm really, I'm really awesome to have the game. Uh, really, really. Again, we have fond memories of us when we used to have our PlayStation together playing games. And that was one of them. So... Now to move on to her very last gift. Oh, so, everybody knows the Game Boy. I did not play the Game Boy much in the Game Boy era. I was not into the Game Boy. It was black and white. You had the Game Gear come around, you know, the Atari, you know, Atari Lynx and stuff, and it was color, and why didn't Nintendo go to color? I was kind of like, kind of like people sign up on Nintendo today. Why don't they make the high-powered console? Why don't they do this? Why don't they do that? So I didn't get one. Now, I was in the military between 92 to 96 uh, in, the, in the Navy, and I had a roommate, and he had he had a Game Boy, and he had Tetris, and so he wanted, you know, he's like, you guys can't, he was talking to me, you guys can't beat, beat me, so me and the other, my other friend who, uh, who I grew up, were lucky enough to, uh, you know, end up you know, being in the same squadron in the military and everything, we, we were all playing it, and we would, you know, we would have some competitions of that, and that was my only experience, was Tetris for the Game Boy. Well, my wife grew up and she had Tetris like everybody did. She had Castlevania Adventure and stuff like that. She has very fond memories of it. I don't. So I, I, I will have been trying to find one with a back battery cover. Because around here, you can find Game Boys. You just can't find one with a battery cover on the back. But, ironically enough, I did find a Game Boy this year with a battery cover. This thing is in flawless condition. There's not a scratch on it. There's not a scuff on it. There's not a mark on it. And here it is right here uh, with the battery back. What was funny was, right before she opened this gift, I opened my gift. And what was my gift, you ask? Why, well, look, it was a Game Boy. Uh, system I don't have, system I never play. I do have games for it, I just uh, never played it. Uh, this one has you know, a couple minor scuffs. It's in honestly great condition. It has a battery cover on the back. Ironically, we got these from the same place, the Trading Post. Uh, I believe she about a month apart when we were talking about it. So we now have two Game Boys, and saying, if you don't know the story, because me and my wife are not very good at sharing when we want to play something, it kind of works out. It's kind of really cool. So there we go. Two Game Boys. What the price of one? A lot of Game Boy games. Oop. That was not the Game Boy, actually. That was something I knocked over. So, Ah, just knocking all kinds of stuff. I need to clean off this desk. There's so much... There's some junk on it, so... Okay. Now, here are my pickups. And I'm going to start off with the stuff that they didn't get me. Uh, that actually this year my wife's parents just gave us money and said get what you know get what you want and I spent a little bit of it on myself I spent I don't know, most of it on actually my son and my wife because this year I wanted to make it a great Christmas this year I'm actually off I took a couple days off work so I'm actually off for four days like all weekend to have fun so that's my goal so the store actually got my wife Pokemon Stadium too I always seem to have stories no matter where I go it's, uh, it's the thing uh, I was talking to the guy there, and listen, I'd been to this store about four months before this, and they had a very small selection of video games. Uh, that he, the store is mainly all old stuff, so you know you'll find a Rock and Sock and original Robot there, and, and stuff like that. There's a lot of cool old stuff. You're, you know, if you're 
80s and like old stuff that that is definitely a store for you even older stuff uh and so like the gremlins original book that i think hardy's released uh they have those and cool stuff like that and i was talking about video games he's actually stores like now like uh, a third video games like he has like a box super nintendo complete the original super nintendo and like a box legend of zelda on the nes and, and perfect mission i was like this is amazing what he's got there now but we were talking before i left and he's like do you clean your video games? Like, oh yeah, you know, what do you use? I said alcohol. He goes, oh, I got a friend who's made this and you want to try it out. It's called uh, One Up Card. I guess you go to OneUpCard.com. I guess you want to check it out. Uh, it's just basically a cleaner where you, you know, you put the cleaning thing, which is basically alcohol, on the little on the little pad, and you wipe it on the contacts, and then you use the drying pad to dry it off. Uh, it's used for Atari, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Genesis, N64. I thought, what the heck? I'll try it out, right? I mean, it's free. I'll try it. Maybe it works really good. We'll have to see. Something I was not expecting. So now, let's get to the my pickups, which to me are not as grand as my wife's because I thought she had really cool stuff. I'm going to start with Amiibos before I actually get to what I got with my wife's parents' money for me. So, my son and my wife decided to get me an Amiibo I really wanted, and that was Metroid. I love Metroid on the NES. And one of the things that gets me about the Amiibos is the old school ones, like Little Mac and like Blue Falcon from F-Zero. Those are the ones I really want, right? I know a lot of people are caught up on, like, I have to get them all. To me, I'm going to get the ones I want, and then eventually if I feel like getting the ones I have no connection to, that's great. But to me, I think it's more important to get the ones you're connected to first. And Metroid is definitely one of those. Now, a rockly story here. So I went and bought, they had a sale at Toys R Us for three Amiibos were off so much. So I bought three, like that's, I got the Link one and, you know, I got got the Pikachu one. And ironically, I got this for myself. Well, ironically enough, when my, when my wife found out, I showed her what I got, uh, she said I had to return it. So I returned it. And instead, I got one of my other favorite characters growing up, and that was Donkey Kong. So, not sure when I'm going to open them. Uh, I'm not like one of those ones, I got to keep it sealed or anything like that. Because it would be awesome for display. And let's be honest, Nintendo could redo different versions of Donkey Kong if they wanted. There's going to be the different versions of Mario for Amiibos down the road, I'm sure. So, uh, it's really cool. Now, let me show you what I got with my uh, parent, her parents' money, the little bit I spent. And the first one I got, I got because Star Tropics on the NES is one of my favorite games on the NES. I just love that game. I read up for that game for months before it came out. I was so excited for it. You know, I'd beaten Final Fantasy. This was the next big RPG for me and I really loved that game honestly and so I picked up Nintendo Power 21 uh, off a of seller on eBay I used to, I know you know what I don't buy games off eBay and I said you know this looked really good condition it was even better condition than I thought it was and uh, there's actually a poster inside because that's the rule if I'm buying this I want the poster I'm not gonna be like oh there's no poster I'm all, I'm all right so uh, the poster is right here inside with the actual like map on the other side it has a metal storm uh, so now I have to get 20, issue 22 because it has the next part of the Star Trek strategy guide. And it is fun to go through this and see all the NES games because this is the first time they talk about like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle 2, the arcade game, and Ultima, uh, the quest for Avatar and stuff. And their first issue of covering the Game Boy since the Game Boy was about to come out. So really, really cool issue to go back and look at. So I got this one from the Seabay seller. And it was in such great condition, got it so quickly, that he had this one I had to get it to and again, just like the last one, this looks better than the actual photo. And it is one of my favorite, another one of my, my, my memorable games on the NES. I can't say favorite because it's one of, my most, one of my memorable games. And that is the Nintendo Power Strategy Guide for Ninja Gaiden 2. Again, I beat this game. I love the, the Ninja Gaiden games on the NES. And it's really cool to have the strategy guide back in the collection. I just sat here the other day. Like the day I got this, the Nintendo Power, there's nobody home. And for three hours, I just read the Nintendo Power, like nostalgia about all the, the ads and stuff in there, and of course the strategy guide. But again, the same store I got, you know, I was talking about that cleaner and stuff. Uh, he had old video game magazines, and I had to pick these up. Uh, this first one, Electronic Gaming Monthly, July 1992, Volume 5, Issue 7, Batman Returns. With first picks of Sonic 2. Again, this is back when I used to read Electronic Gaming Monthly and Game Pro every month rigorously and to go back and see like the turbo graphics coming in and all the other stuff back then it's just like an amazing time period 
And of course, since Star Wars Episode Seven's coming out next year, and I'm in full Star Wars geek mode right now. I'm a big Star Wars fan. I told my wife I really need to save it because I know when that new Millennium Falcon comes out, I'm going to have to get it. So, he had Electronic Game Monthly, August 1994, Volume 7, Issue 8, the Super Return of the Jedi cover. Again, awesome to have this back. Of course, a bunch of the different games, Mega Man X2, uh, of course, uh, Super Punch-Out, Virtual Cop, you know, Dark Count Country, uh, Again, great time period of my childhood. Between the 18- and 16-bit era, those two eras, I mean, I have so many fond memories of there. And these were a surprise because I forgot these magazines were out, and that's basically, you know, just one of those things you forget over time. Because back then, I got every gaming magazine that came out at, at all, and because I got so many, all the different, like, cheat code guides and all that other stuff, I kind of forgot these, and once I saw I was like, man, I really need to get these. This is a Game Player Strategy Guides to Nintendo Games, Volume 4, number 1, with Dragon Warrior 2 on the cover. Again, awesome. And if you really want to go old school, you look at the back. Werewolf from Data East. Again, awesome. Awesome to have this uh, in the strategy guide. And of course, this has a sneak peek to Nintendo's super, new Super Famicom, which is kind of, kind of funny to go back thinking about, you know, the big deal was made about the fact. I mean, again, amazing system, but it, you know, you go back and think, well, you know, all the hype that was made back then. Uh, I got this one too. This is the, the same guide, uh, volume four, number three issue with Ultimate Quest of the Avatar on the cover. Plus, it has Mega Man Two Secrets, and a bunch of other games, of course. Gremlins Two, Little Nemo, you know, the California Raisins, a bunch of cool stuff. Really awesome to have that. Love that. I love the old school cover. I really do. It's really awesome. Now, I've talked about this game before. This is another player's guide. I gotta get the tape off this later because uh, it's not on. It's just it'll come off. It's just a guy slowly get it off. Uh, one of my favorite guy, uh, Volume Four, no, Number Four. You know, again, the video game, play, the game player's strategy guide to Nintendo games. One of my favorite games, Gauntlet Two, is on the cover, and of course it says Solace Mapping Guide, and of course what else do we have? We have GI Joe, Cabal. Uh, Muffet Adventure, Silver Surfer, not a good. Street Fighter 2010, not a good game. Uh, I got that, by the way, I got that game for Christmas one year. That and Bill Lambert's Basketball. And even though at first I was disappointed, I actually got fun out of Bill Lambert's Basketball. And actually, uh, uh, Street Fighter 2010, it just wasn't the game I was looking for when I think of Street Fighter. So those are the cool magazines I got. I'm really into getting these now because I want all these magazines from the past and look at all the ads and stuff. I know this is going to be like a 30 minute video, but a lot of stuff to go through. Now, to my list really quick. First game I opened up, ever, thing I ever opened up that was a game was on a Super Nintendo that I don't have and was glad to have again because I played it a lot, and that was Street Fighter 2. Capcom goodness. Love the Street Fighter 2. I was such a fan of that arcade game back in the day and played it so much. Uh, next one is a game I never played and I can't wait to play in the 64. Banjo Tooie, but back when Rare was at the height of its of this game and its popularity. Oh, by the way, when I got my Game Boy, she also had the book with it, so that's cool to have. Now we're gonna get some NES uh, memories here. So uh, I got uh, Yoshi's Cookie uh, for the Game Boy. Well, yeah, for the uh, Game Boy, you know, last year, and I kind of knew, I kind of. I kind of had an inkling that I was going to get this one, so uh, it was kinda, it's cool to get this one, by the way. Uh, if you like your Tetris-like game, except for like Yoshi characters. Really fun game. Really cool to have. Another game I don't. But yes, it's really cool. But this game I have fond memories of. It is Karnov. Now, <laughs> when I went to high school, uh, we had, when, I, when I finished elementary school at school, fifth grade, or fourth grade, we moved uh, fifth grade out of, to another town uh, from my hometown and then right before I moved high school uh, we move end up moving back to my original hometown I grew up in and so across town is where the high school is because when I grew up my elementary school was actually a block away from my house uh, so I you know could never miss school because I lived a block away or anything like that so the school is across town and I started high school there all the other kids that started junior high and so I went there uh, started high school and down the road from the high school half a block, there was, they called it the deli. 
they served hot food there, burgers, french fries, stuff like that. Uh, a lot of kids would go there on their lunch hour, hour because, of course, they would have the TV going for the girls for soap operas and food for the people who eat food. But also in there were arcade machines. The first time I went in there, I still remember to this day, they had three arcade machines in there. Pole Position 2, Rygar, and Karnov. Now, I played Karnov a little bit, but not a lot at that point. And I played it a lot in the arcade machine, and I play, and then later on I got this from the NES, and I played this game a lot. I love the game Karnov. Is, uh, I have a lot of memories tied to this NES game. What's funny about Karnov is there was a time, now everybody as a gamer knows this, where you're in your groove with the game, you're you're just tearing it up, you're like, you know you're never going to be this good at this game again, you're just on a roll. Like, when, when you're on a roll like that, and you and your best friend are sitting there, you don't speak, because you know if you speak, you might ruin it. You don't want to do anything to ruin it, so you don't say anything, you just quietly watch them play and like oh I can't believe he's on this roll and, and you get further than you ever have one day at my best friend's house that happened with Karnov I was on a roll in that game I hit, I hit the last level and I actually beat that game on the NES it was like that game was so hard in front, at times for me and it was one of my like greatest achievements to me on the NES was beating Karnov because to me it was a difficult game and I'll never forget it but man this video is already 26 minutes but the last the game, the last thing I got is one of the most memorable games of all that I can't believe I did this long without having it in my collection. The last game I got for Christmas was Super Mario Brothers 2. The box is in the greatest condition of all time, but it doesn't matter. You know, you know I say I, I get cartridges because the boxes are really expensive. But I love the box art. I love the Mario jumping on the cover of this. I know a lot of people kind of rip on this game because it is, again, a reworking of Doki Doki Panic from Japan, but I don't care. I was so into Mario, but Mario at the time, and when I saw this when I first heard this game was coming out, I was so hyped for it. And the Christmas I got this game, that's all I played this day. I love this game. I just love the back and the screenshots and, and like how many times I used to like read the back of this game when it came out. It just blew me away. Now, of course, the cartridge is in, of course, perfect label condition which is awesome but the biggest and the best thing for me something I love more than anything that I miss more than anything is the good old instruction booklet for those who don't know the story of Super Mario Brothers 2 Mario has a dream that the subcon kingdom and his dream is being held back held down by King, by King Wart and that they want Mario to uh, needs to save them and Mario, Toad, Luigi, for some reason, because he has this dream and he tells about it, they go on a picnic and they find a cave. And the cave ends leading to the Subcon Kingdom. So, that's the story of the game. Of course, everybody knows that this game is kind of arty because he had a dream. They go through the cave, and if you ain't play the game, well, you're going to get spoiled. If you ain't play it by now, you know, what's wrong with you? Because it's a great game. Uh, the end of the game ends up being all a dream. So, but I love the old school like this, the enemies and the characters in the game. Of course, this game was one that gave us like Birdo and Shy Guy. Uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of characters still are in Mario games today. But to get that game is just uh, one of my classics memories for me. I'm so glad. So today I'm going to be playing me some NES. There, there's no doubt. Super Mario Brothers 2. Yeah. So now I have all three Mario Brothers games on the NES. Uh, again, they're all, I love them all. Again, Super Mario Bros. 3 is my favorite, but Super Mario Bros. 2 is really close. And again, I don't understand uh, the not love for this game. I don't care if it's a re redone of Toki, Do Doki Doni Panic. It is an awesome game. So guys, that is my pickups for this year. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you lasted in the end of this video, thank you because it is an incredibly long video. And uh, like always, thanks for watching. And I will have another video up next week for you guys. Possibly Sunday. We'll see. Anyway, talk to you guys later.